This content is brought to you by Uphold, which makes crypto investing easy. I've been a user of Uphold since 2017. They're one of my go-to exchanges. You can buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies on Uphold. You can also trade precious metals and equities. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. As with all exchanges, you can buy and sell on them, but I highly recommend you custody your own crypto, not your keys, not your coins. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. With me today is Marcus Feistel, who is the Chief Operating Officer at LimeWire. Marcus, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me today. Really, really excited to be here, actually. Marcus, as I'm reading that introduction, and I'm ta- I'm saying I'm interviewing the chief operating officer at LimeWire, I got a surreal moment. I'm, I'm actually speaking with someone from LimeWire. And this goes back to my nostalgic days of uh, peer-to-peer file sharing, downloading <laughs> music and things like that in my early days. And uh, it's it's so surreal to be speaking with you. I'm really, really excited. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I mean, likewise, to be honest, uh, if somebody told me 10 years ago when I was still downloading music from LiveWire that, <laughs> that I would one day actually work for the company actually in a leading position even, I would have never, never thought that to be true. But uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty, pretty exciting journey, I have to admit. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So before we talk all things LimeWire, tell us about yourself. Where are you from and where'd you go up? Uh, yeah, happy to. So I'm originally from, from Germany, as you can probably tell by the accent. Uh, living in Austria here, Vienna. That's where we are. We are based. Uh, that's where our headquarters is. Um, yeah, been been in the crypto space for quite some time now. Um, I've initially worked for for Bitpanda, which is like the European based uh, exchange, pretty much the biggest crypto exchange here in in Europe. Where I headed the German speaking area, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And now, yeah, heading heading Limewise uh, operations. So again, crypto space, maybe even a bit. Deeper into the rabbit hole now, since we are now dealing with NFTs a lot um, and and ownable content, which is probably even more geeky than just investing in crypto. Um, yeah, that's a that's a long story short. Um, and what was your first encounter with Bitcoin and crypto, and what was your aha moment? Aha moment came relatively late, late. I mean, probably still early for for general uh, purposes. But um, like my, my very first touch point was when I was still a teenager. I actually wanted to purchase um bitcoin back in the day but my mom didn't give me her her credit card credentials <laughs> which is too bad if, if i just see that in hindsight now but um my actual like real real touch point were then like 2016 2017 obviously also um yeah pretty much got a be, became a burnt child very quickly in 2017 after the first bull run that i experienced uh but have been in the space ever since so so really uh, interested since that day, I've been holding and holding since uh, 2016, roughly. So, so that's been the first touch touch point, the first days when I when I got into it. Oh, that's awesome! And then, of course, you went to work for Bitpanda Crypto Exchange, right? You got hooked. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's that's just part of the nature of business, I guess. If you work for a company like this, there's just one way: uh, just just being curious, and yeah, obviously also trading some crypto uh, pretty much every day. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So let's talk LimeWire. Um, and maybe for those who may not have heard of LimeWire, I don't know if the, how that's possible, but there's probably people who are like, what's LimeWire? Um, uh, if you can tell us about the journey of the company and the brand and where it is now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, certainly like one of the most interesting ones, probably the most interesting project I've ever, ever, ever worked on. Um so LimeWire back in the day, for those who don't know, especially Gen Z, who is probably not uh, particularly aware, um, it used to be like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, peer-to-peer file sharing platforms of the early 2000s. So started in 2000, um, and then the company ceased business in 2011. Um, and I mean, the, the, the simple keywords are music downloads, illegal music downloads mostly. That's That's really where... Probably most guys like you and me in our age group and in their now like late twenties, early mid thirties, uh, got all of the music pretty much. That's how I got okay. downloaded my music, got it on my on my iPod, my very first iPod back in the day, um, and and discovered a lot of the artists. 
Um, the company had to shut down in 2011, was pretty big at that time with around 50, mon 50 million monthly active users, especially big in the US and the UK, parts of Asia. But obviously it was a pretty controversial platform, right? Because um, fans and, and music lovers downloaded and, and shared music for free, which wasn't particularly in the interest of the music industry, um, which is why they had to shut down the company in 2011. And about two years ago, we, we set out with the idea of, yeah, now doing something in the crypto slash uh, music and entertainment space with half of our team, especially Paul and Julian, the two CEOs um, coming from a software business, software background. They founded a couple of software as a service startups. Um, and then the other half is really from the crypto space, just like myself. Um, and we had this idea of if we want to work in that space, we need a big brand, like something that really resonates with people. And we're lucky enough to get hold of all the assets of, of LimeWire. So we pretty much acquired the social media accounts, the, the domain, um, uh, all the trademarks are registered now again. Um, and yeah, just, just launched, relaunched that platform with a new purpose now. It's really about web free in the music space. Uh, but again, in the same industry, um, pretty much for any type of creator nowadays that's, that wants to work with their fan base in a web free environment. That's amazing. Uh, it's it's just it's such an interesting story. Once again, going from illegal file download and music download, and now uh, new life being brought into the brand, and it's still music focused. So tell us about the mission of the company now um, with an NFT marketplace, uh, music, digital ownership, and you said creators. So it could be like musicians, folks who artists and so forth. Tell us about the vision that you guys are trying to uh, you know build here. Yeah, so so our vision is really to to bring that element of of ownership that that NFTs as a technology have uh, into the creator space, like artist and creator space, in in simple words. Um, because there's a couple of issues that we we see in that space that we um, already saw very early last year. So last year in in June, we launched with our first um, yeah iteration of the platform as a fully fledged NFT marketplace, uh, mainly for music artists. Um, which was super exciting to see. We had a whole lot of artists coming on a platform from big headliners to, to smaller emerging ones, launching the NFT projects. But what they raised very early on um, as one of the key issues and problems for them to solve was really they don't necessarily just want to do a one-off NFT drop, which is collecting a lot of wallet addresses from, from Web3 users, but it's actually not really talking to their main and core fan base, right? Because it's just a subset of people that are already equipped with, with crypto knowledge. What they wanted to, to create is a, is a closer bond with their fans, also communicate with them in an easy way of like also having that exchange um, on one single platform, which is why we uh, actually now this month uh, launched a, yeah, a bit, bit more of a front-end update of the platform. So now everything is completely community-based. Um, so you can easily, as an artist, come on LimeWire, create your creator page. Everything is gated through communities, which can either be paid or for free. And everybody who's subscribing to you, to your feed, will automatically get every content piece as a digital collectible, pretty much as an NFT. Um, and that opens up a whole lot of opportunities for artists and fans to interact with each other, because now you have you don't just have holders of an NFT, you actually can engage with them on the platform with direct messages and commenting functions, which we are launching in a couple of weeks. Um, you can also do new drops for, for your fan base, really targeted to your subscribers. Um, and these fans can also trade those assets, right? They don't just come into a feed and pay for accessing ex exclusive content, but they can actually sell that content to new users, to new fans, which haven't get, gotten access to it yet. So it's much more than just coming on a platform and subscribing to an artist. It's actually, I would say, almost like being a, a shareholder in the artist's success as well. So they are pretty much, uh, yeah, very aligned uh, in, in the artist's journey. That's amazing. And there's multiple themes that you hit on there. One, addressing an issue the artists are fi uh, are facing for a long time. And it's been a debate between the music labels and the artists and how can the artists... Uh, ensure they're not getting taken advantage of and they can monetize their uh, intellectual uh, property rights, right? Their their concepts, their music. And then two, uh, giving the fans of those artists the ability to have a greater experience, a more closer experience, 
and like you said, a more equ- equitable experience where they share in the benefit as well. Uh, it's it's a brave new world with Web3 and it's addressing a lot of the issues. Yes, 100%. I, I think like one of the key issues, um, especially for independent artists, is really monetization of their content, right? Because they don't, they, they m- many actually nowadays, they set out with this strategy of being an independent artist and don't sign big uh, uh, major label deals. Which is completely fair. I think in the long run, oftentimes also a very smart decision. Uh, like obviously for those that, that that get the reach and get the fan base going at some point, uh, but it's also very risky, right? And there's not many options for them to monetize on their content early on and on their fan base early on, um, because they are in the first days and, and months definitely in a in a yeah position which is difficult because you need those funds to build out your content, to shoot videos, to to get uh, like all the marketing going. Um, and I think uh, LimeWire and also this ownership piece is is really an opportunity to for them to monetize very early on and also on a continuous basis. Um, and at the same time, what we got as feedback from many of the artists as well is that they sometimes shy away from platforms um, like other subscription platforms where they ask fans for a monthly subscription just to get content. Mm. Because if there's no ownership element, which is definitely one of the solving keys, it sounds a bit like um, I want you to pay to get access, access to content which used to be free before. Um, but with this ownership piece and NFT as a as a yeah, like a back end solution where you create this this um, ledger almost of owners of your fans, it's a completely different story because you're giving back something. It's completely ownable and it's not just paying a fee to see content uh, which might actually also be for free. Yeah, you know, as you're saying those things, I'm just thinking about the massive disruption that's taking place. You know, we've seen disruption uh, throughout history. And and when you just look at the Internet and, and file sharing and now look at where we come from, people don't have to illegally download something. They can participate and be equity holders and share in the benefits. That's That's pretty amazing. Yes, 100 percent. I think that's 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 really what it is about. And I think. As I said before, it opens a lot of doors for for different products, features, innovation on the platform, which we can open up. So one one topic we are actually looking into a lot now, uh, which we already have on the roadmap for end of the year, is um, that obviously there's also a lot of fans or, or users on the platform and outside of the platform that want to see that content as well, but might not necessarily have subscribed to the artist. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we will start doing at some point is charging pay-per-view uh, access to those to those content pieces, which can be videos, can be music, can be uh, photographs, or pretty much anything they're hosting on LimeWire. Um, and these revenues will be redistributed to all the NFT holders of that asset. So mm-hmm. let's say the, art- the artist has um, a thousand subscribers to their newsfeed, so the video they just uploaded has a thousand NFT holders, and every every dollar that is being generated as pay per view um, revenue from people that are not subscribed will be redistributed to the ones um, that own that piece, which is super amazing for the artists because they're giving something back for the early supporters. But on the other side, it's also nice for the fan to not just pay but actually be invested in the artist, um, and you have this like circular economy almost um, for for creators in the web free space. Uh, that's amazing. I, I love that. Um, and then you you partner with Universal Music Group, right? Uh, can you tell us about that partnership and the plans there? Yeah, that's a, that's a really amazing one, actually. I mean, obviously, it's great that they like such a big prop. I mean, the biggest biggest label, biggest player in the music space is partnering with us. Um, pretty much like a web free startup almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really amazing to see. It's also a bit of a funny background story, obviously, because Universal Music back in the day was one of the main reasons why yeah. <laughs> the initial LimeWire platform had to shut down in 2011. Wow. So you can imagine that there were quite lengthy discussions um, on on both sides uh, how to structure this and how to like also publicly announce it. Um, but yeah, the long story short is we have a global deal with Universal Music. We can theoretically license all their catalog of all the artists that are signed with them, which is is really good for us and especially artists that are already signed for uni- with, with Universal because it opens the door for them as well, right? They're not st- restricted through their through their label deal anymore. They can really just come to, to LimeWire even though they have a label deal signed and, and just uh, get their content on the platform. It's it's so funny. Uh, it's like you've come full circle, right? Uh, disruption, fighting, and now working together. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But to be honest, it's only that's really the only way. You gotta open your doors um, for for this new type of 
of platform and fan engagement for for all the sides, right? It wouldn't really make sense to only work with independent artists. The same way, it just doesn't make sense to only work for for label signed artists. So we really wanted to provide a framework pretty much for any artist and creator out there. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, and that absolutely makes sense. Um, now tell us about the blockchain structure. Uh, I know you guys are launching a, the L. MWR token is the platform running on Ethereum with, with the tokenization of NFTs and then of course your upcoming token. So the platform itself, the NFTs, most of them are, are minted. Pretty much all of the artist collections are minted um, uh, on Algorand. Uh, yeah. Main reason for that is it's actually also a very interesting one. We set out very early last year um, thinking about different different chains to use for for the launch of the platform. And saw very quickly that a lot of the artists were asking about, especially with all the Ethereum news we had early last year and the environmental impact, uh, which chain we're using. Um, and then we partnered up very early on with, with Algorand because we saw that this is like one of the key topics for a lot of artists. They want to like launch products and, and launch, uh, in web three with, with, uh, yeah, like being cautious about the environment. Let's put it like this. Sure. Um, and Algorand was just a really good fit and it's extremely scalable for us as a technology. At the same time, we already did collections, one on Ethereum, one on Polygon. And um, like always, if there is a big artist that is requesting it because they sometimes have communities in the Web3 space on Ethereum, on Polygon, on other chains, we can definitely uh, accompany that. On our LMWR token, the Limewire token, that's uh, Ethereum based, that's an ERC20 token. And we're actually launching it 2nd of May, so really close to the actual launch of the of the token with the public sale. Um, and that's going to be like one of the really, really big features uh, and updates on the platform as soon as it is launched uh, early May. Um, because there's a whole lot of features coming in with it. We will have uh, custodial wallets for the token. Um, users will also be able to, to use the token to engage with the artists. They can tip artists with the token. They can uh, pay to end up in their direct messages uh, and, and really be super engaging, a lot more gamified at the end um, through the token as well. And we will also use it towards end of the year um, to have this redistribution of, of pay-per-view um, uh, yeah, revenues to the, to the artists and to the fans as well. So it's really going to be like a huge upgrade to the, to the platform. Oh, that's awesome. So the token unlocks a lot of utility uh, with engaging with the artists and back and forth. And uh, you, you of course, get benefits of holding the token, as, as you mentioned. Yes, exactly. There will be a, like a whole range of re rewards. We're going to launch this over a couple of couple of weeks and months. So not all the features will be live at the beginning just to get people and users used to the token as well. Um, but there's there's like a lot of a lot of utility uh, behind it specifically on the platform. Like one feature I like the most, for instance, is that we will have three different tier levels depending on how many LMWR tokens you're holding on the platform. Um, and depending on each level, you can actually get access to very exclusive communities within the platform. So the highest level, the LimeWire Pro status, will actually get you access to also the most exclusive community um, and in the in these communities we are doing uh, highly curated nft drops or music drops uh, from artists we are working with uh, so you just get this pretty much complementary with holding tokens on the platform and using them yeah oh, that's awesome uh, tell us about the tokenomics what's the circulating supply will there be um, any proof of stake or anything involved will there be any burns uh, any, anything you can share there yeah, uh, so it's pretty straightforward. There's, uh, there's going to be 1 billion uh, LMWR token. That's the max supply. There's also never going to be more than these. Um, then um, what's also interesting probably is we did a private sale of the token last year already, where we onboarded a whole list of yeah very uh, well, well-known uh, Web3 and, and venture capital firms like Kraken Ventures, Crypto.com Capital, Arrington Capital, GSR, um, so so a lot of big uh, funds that supported us throughout the entire last uh, yeah, 18 months or so we've been working on this. Um, and now we, we are headed towards the public sale. So public sale is happening on 2nd of, Ju uh, 2nd of May. Mm -hmm. um, all the information, if anybody is curious to read more about it, is, is on lmwr.com. That's, that's the domain we use, the platform we use for the token including the white paper. Um, and yeah, if like anybody wants to get hold of the token early on, uh, starting 2nd May is, is probably the day to to look into. So I have a question, and, and this is a complex one. And I guess first part is, is this token sale available to US users? And, and 
or all markets. Um, and the reason why I mentioned U.S. is just there's a lot of regulatory uncertainty here in the U.S. And are you, are there any concerns with the SEC? Uh, we just saw recently with Bittrex getting a lawsuit, they mentioned Algorand and things like that. Yep. And, and look, there's nothing concrete. It's just a mess here in the United States. But any concerns about that? Yeah, it's really tough, tough in the U.S., to be fully honest. I mean, it just quickly answering your, your question around the token itself, um, we obviously, Lionbuy used to be a very big brand in the U.S., so we want to case our U.S. community and everybody who's nostalgic about the brand as well in the U.S. Um, so what we did for the U.S. specifically is we're partnering up with Republic, which is uh, one of the launch pads, the key launch pad we're working with for the sale. Um, they also have, together with us, we developed a solution to also cater um, token availability in the U.S., so definitely check it out. You can also find all the information regarding that on lmwr.com. Um, but it's a bit restrictive, uh, so we can't address everybody in the U.S. That's a bit a bit of a pity for the for the primary sale. What I can say already is that we will have uh, four major exchange listings um, right after the token sale. So on 16th of May, we're actually going to be listed on four major exchanges, and these also cover cover global. Um, like trading so you will also be able to get it in the united states um so that's that much about the token but in general ad addressing your question this is definitely a concern um globally at the moment if you are like a global brand like limewire especially for me coming from from europe and having worked in a european environment i now appreciate how clear regulation is in europe around tokens, uh, what the differentiation between a utility and the payment and a, and a security token is in the US, everything is so fuzzy. Um, I think we've, we've seen this in the last weeks that that even, even when you ask them on spot, I mean, you probably also saw this congressional yeah. hearing with uh, Gary Gensler. They don't even want to make a statement about it. I, I think there's so much uncertainty in the market, which doesn't help anybody, um, that, that it is definitely a, a, a big concern and something we're constantly looking into. So we also treat uh us and rest of world um project wise separately for for everything token related so we have two different legal teams one is in the us and one is in europe mm. um we we always try to cover both because it's really challenging but yeah i really hope the united states are gonna gonna step up quickly um in terms of in terms of regulation and just just make it a clear clear setup as well yeah, I'm hopeful too. I'm here in the United States and it's really hard for innovators and entrepreneurs because it's like you don't know what the rules of the road are. Uh, so it's confusing and you have different government agencies saying different things. Um, but yesterday there was some good news. Uh, the EU, I think um, they pushed through the approval for the MICA law. It's a, it's a crypto regulations. Any thoughts on that? I don't know if you got a chance to, to catch up on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've been looking into it uh, quite, quite, quite a lot. I already did so when when I was still working for Bitpanda. Um, I mean, I, I think what's really good in Europe, and especially with with Mica coming up, is they they now try to unify regulation across the countries, right? Um, because beforehand and still today, when you look, especially for working for for a for a company which is active in different markets in Europe as well. Um, at the moment, it's really difficult because you have to, again, address every country individually. And with MICA coming up, this is hopefully going to change dramatically because it's pretty much going to be implemented in every single European country at some point. But it's still a long way um, because they need to implement it on, on, on regional, on, on country level as well. Um, and it's also a very complex regulation, to be honest. It's not very easy. But at least you have a guidance. At least you know what to follow, which is definitely definitely helpful. Um, so I think the the right steps are being taken. But on a global scale, you you can see that in different countries. I think Singapore is doing an an exceptional job on this. Um, there's a couple of jurisdictions where they really show how how it can be done. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. At, at least, like you said, at least there's um, some level of clarity, right, and not confusion. Uh, moving in the right direction, at least. Um, I had a question, you know, LimeWire, it's very music focused, uh, but it might, it, it doesn't make sense. And are you guys thinking about this? Could you merge or bring in the movie industry as well for video movie creators and so forth? Oh, yeah, 100%. So with um, the launch we did uh, this this month, actually, with this update of the platform, which by the way, I would really recommend checking it out. Obviously, I'm biased, um, but mm -hmm. we really, in my opinion, we really managed to to take that leap from an NFT marketplace, which is primarily about trading assets, 
um, towards consuming the content as well. I think something that a lot of the platforms haven't done well in the NFT space is how do I actually look and consume and listen to the content? Um, and that's something we we completely changed now. So I think it's really a first into the market uh, in that regard. And with this update, we are also open to pretty much any type of creator. So we have uh, YouTubers on the platform. We have uh, like creators which are really only doing video content. We have others which are hosting podcasts on LimeWire. Um, a lot of them are still music related in some sense, but they are sharing completely various uh, types of content. So you can really host anything that's that's available in a digital format pretty much. Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to have to go on there, <laughs> bring my YouTube content on there. <laughs> oh, 100%. I think, especially for this case, I think it's a very, very neat solution, right? Because you can also do extended versions. You could do, um, I don't know, just a special edition of the podcast or whatever. Just host it there for, for special purposes or, or a certain type of user base. Uh, so I think it's a very, very neat solution to engage with the core and 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 main fans of, of, your, of your following, yeah. Wow, oh, awesome. Well, I'm going to have to test that out. We'll, we'll talk more offline. Um, so what's on your 2023 roadmap? Obviously, you got a lot. You got a token launch coming up, you can, further iterations. Anything else you want to highlight for the roadmap? Yeah, so the two big things are, um, obviously, with, with this new uh, product launch, we um, are also releasing a whole lot of, of, of artists, especially headliners we've been working with for quite some time. So I think we have like 15 headliners signed for the rest of the year. We just launched uh, this month uh, Sean Kingston, who released a, um, a, a a track, an exclusive track, Sally, on the platform. We also uh, this week actually we we announced uh, Lauren Drugi, which is uh, also coming. It's actually quite interesting. She's moving her entire uh, subscriber community, which she has already on Patreon, to LimeWire now because of that wow. uh, Web three element of the platform. And we have around twelve to fifteen additional headliners, which are coming over the next weeks and months. So. That's definitely exciting. So a lot of, of artists joining the platform over the next period. Um, and then the token, the token launch uh, starting May 2nd. Then the listing of the token, that's definitely going to be a big day uh, for the community and for us. Um, and then integrating the token into the platform and, and delivering on all the utilities. Oh, that's exciting. Um, and great to hear uh, some of these artists, you know, moving over, you know, taking their whole uh, follower community to LimeWire. That's that's awesome. Um, let's talk a bit about the general crypto market at large. Um, you know, you've seen the bull markets, the bear markets. It seems like we bottomed out. You know, the Bitcoin has bottomed out, and we're seeing a rally. Um, by no means are we in a you know massive bull market, but we're seeing a bullish rally. Next year is the having. You know, what's your outlook? You, do you still think the four year cycles are playing out here with with the price and and so forth? Yeah, I mean, really tough to predict. I mean, probably probably nobody can uh, really predict that. But it, I, I hope so. I mean, we've seen it the last uh, three or four times already with the cycle. I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't be completely different. But what you can see for sure is it's like everything is getting a, a lot less volatile, right? If you remember, like last time we had a bear, bear market, also the time before, it was like a lot more volatile than what we have nowadays. Um, also, the dips have been much lower. In my is, is my my impression, mm -hmm. um, and the, the 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 bottoms that a lot of people were talking about, like Bitcoin going to 10k, haven't really happened this time around. Um, we are already way beyond that, so it, it it feels like it's getting a lot more stable, which is good because obviously adoption is going up. But yeah, I mean, to be honest, also for the platform and for the excitement and everything in the space, I can't wait for for the next bull run to happen. Hopefully next year. So, so let's see. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, Marcus, I got some wrap up questions here for you. Uh, sure. First is if you could create your own metaverse, what would the theme be? Oh, oh, wow. My own metaverse. It's, it's really funny. Actually, we tried um, an event already and we're doing a few more with uh, Decentraland. So we have our own stage, the LimeWire stage on Decentraland. Um, I think it would actually be something entertainment related because I think uh, that's that's uh, there is there's still a lot to do. Yeah, let's put it like this: being in a concert or even even sports events in the metaverse and attending this virtually might might actually be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that's right up your alley, right? You you have the artists. You're trying to create experiences. Metaverse seamlessly would integrate in what you guys are trying to do. 
Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's even like a step closer towards uh, fan artist interaction. So, but it's it's still a long way to go. I think. Yeah, for sure. All right, got some rapid fire questions for you. Favorite food? Oof, tough one. Um, I'd probably go with paella. Favorite musician or band? I mean, I'm, I'm a lime wire nostalgic. What I downloaded the most by far, I would say, is Linkin Park. Um, yeah. I, I'll definitely have to go with them. That's that's my youth. Oh, yeah, same here. I was downloading Linkin Park songs on LimeWire. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Pulp Fiction. Favorite book? Um, that's an easy one, actually. T.C. Boyle. Um, I think... I think in English it's called uh, "Into the No Outside Looking In." Yeah, mm. uh, I read it in German. Really good book. Can only recommend it. Yeah, awesome. And then when you're not working at LimeWire, what are you doing for fun as a hobby? Oh, uh, everything somewhat sports related. That's that's uh, pretty much uh, clearing my head. So skiing in the winter time, hiking, playing tennis. That's that's pretty much me. Awesome, Marcus. It was a pleasure chatting with you. I hope to have you back on as things progress with LimeWire. Really excited for what you guys are doing, but thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers.